let's get this skedaddler wrapped up and take her for a test ride. All right, we're getting down to the final stuff on the skedaddler. So, old Tilly, still loose. We'll get this thing mounted up, get it plumbed, get the throttle cable on it, all that good stuff. Exhaust, may or may not happen to get these ball swivel pieces on there today. It's not a requirement to run it today. The flex pipe is still holding together, but before the race, I got to get these on there because I don't trust that old flex pipe to hold together for a 20-mile race. Uh, um, so there's all that and maybe a little more. Let's dig into it. Let's get this thing done. What's this nutter? Why is the motor out? It's the old motor. Calm down. Uh, the first thing I need is these low boy nuts and, uh, I need those to mount the carb and they're kind of special nuts being that they're low boys like that. So I'm going to get this HR loose from here. At least I think might need a special wrench, which I probably have somewhere. But uh, we're gonna get this thing loose, and then that'll give me some access to get those nuts off. That definitely has some blue Loctite or something going on there, unless it's a crimp nut. All right, there we go. Round one. I'll just let that dangle by the impulse line for a moment. And let's get to these. Those are your basic 17 millimeter metric. This is a good time for me to show you this uh, HR adapter that I made a long time ago. This motor was actually set up for an HD. Why I never put it back on, I don't know. Sheer laziness, I guess. Uh, an HD is the way to go. Especially when you're a heavyweight like I am. All right. So here's those low boy nuts. And here's my fancy adapter I made. Custom gasket. And uh, you could see I taper boarded on the lathe. And uh, I don't know. Once again, it was for some kind of racing class. Oh, yeah. You can see I'll rip this gasket a little bit, but I made slots to capture the hex on those, so I didn't need a wrench on the backside. Uh, we're done with this. I mean, you never know. I'll put it in the pile. You never know what the future holds. But for now, these are what I need to proceed. All right, test fit these nuts. Oh, oh, they're gummy. All right, I'm gonna grab a socket, run those down, and run them back off to clean up the threads. Just want to show you this poor nut. So what happens a lot is guys don't have or won't make the special wrench. And so they'll just beat on the corners of the nut with a screwdriver like you could see. Uh, don't do that. That's just dumb. How are you going to tighten it up properly that way? Don't do that. All right, back to the carb install. So if you recall, I clogged up that impulse port. Um, this flange doesn't have it. we got to get the impulse from down here where I'm pointing. That's the impulse fitting, just like uh, most sleds have, anything that's not a Rotax. So even though the gasket's got the impulse uh, little holes in it for a Rotax, Nobody cares. Don't need them. So I'm going to put the bead on nut, the more bead on nut, out here. And uh, they kind of suck to get started. And especially when you're leaning across in a very awkward position because you're trying to show it on a video. All right, just trust me that I'll get those started and I'll bring you back. i got to stand where the camera is. Well, let's suck getting the nuts started on this. And part of the problem is the bolt can slide way back, like you, like you see, and you won't have enough threads sticking out to get the nuts started. 
That's why you see this screwdriver jammed in there that's holding the bolt out. Eventually I was able to use my fingertips and run that nut in. Uh, but you see the problem. How do you get a wrench on that thing, right? And you got a lot of stuff going on, including this little throttle doohickey here that's blocking you. Well, we're either going to find or make the custom wrench that you need. This one's easy. This one over here, not so easy. All right, we'll give you a little different view. Look at this. I found my old custom wrench. So now, can I get it in there? Let's see, let's move this wire out of the way. Does it even go in? Oh boy. That is a challenge to even get it on the nut. Let's do the easy one first, then it'll quit wiggling around. Yeah, if you're wondering if this sucks, yeah, it does. We all, everybody that runs these knows it. We all know that whatever you're running is better for this and yada, yada, yada. Um, And this is why you see the screwdriver marks on those. It'd be a lot better if this thing was rotated. It's kind of tricky to get it in there. It's more than a little tricky, but you kind of fish it through and tighten. And yes, every quarter turn or whatever that was, you do that. And, yes, you carry this wrench in your toolbox just in case you have trouble on the trail or it gets loose on the trail. All right, so now we're getting to the end of the finger tight. So now we stick a screwdriver into the end of the special wrench to help us run it down. Oh, if we can keep it on the nut. Come on, get on there. All right, there we go. That is about as tight as that's going to get. I'll tighten down the other one. our HD carb is mounted. That was great, wasn't it? Super convenient. Well, let me show you the last half hour of dicking around I just did. Just one of those things. So the, the throttle was sticking on, on this thing pretty bad. And I checked all over, and what I finally traced it down to was the uh, inner cable here was rubbing at the bottom, and that's threaded in there where I'm pointing. Um, that's no good. So this isn't the right cable for a skedaddler. Lord knows where you'd find one of those. This is just a generic, most likely Articat throttle cable. Um, so what I did is uh, you can see there's this piece of inch and a half OD by one inch ID. Yeah, I said one inch ID. Skedaddler handlebars are one inch. Um, there's this piece of tube. I cut a slit so I could slide it over. Uh, it wasn't quite enough, so I found this little rubber piece, which is maybe a little much, but as you can see, I'm bullseyeing that throttle cable right down the middle now, and that's way better than adding a second return spring, because that'll fatigue the heck out of your thumb. So there you go. There's the bottom part. I ended up going back to the bracket on the motor, and uh, there's the top part. Oh yeah, let me show you why I went back to the bracket on the motor. So once I had the cable mounted to this bracket on the carb, 
all of a sudden I couldn't adjust the idle anymore. In fact, I can't adjust it super well, even the way it is. But I do have that pulling straight up, basically. So I'm pretty happy with that. So all things considered, this will fly. All right, next thing, let's plumb some fuel lines. So I know there's a lot of guys that would just reuse these old lines. I mean, they feel fine. They're still flexible. They're not drying out. But uh, I don't know. I'm not taking any chances. That was one of the problems I had on the 20 last year was uh, the fuel lines were rotten on that sled. Also, I want to get into the fuel tank, and uh, I want to replace the pickup line, too. Why not? I mean, I'm here, and the level's low enough to pull that fitting out. So, right under the steering, you can maybe see it a little better now, but right under the steering, there's your basic pickup fitting, and it just screws into the tank. So, I'll get out an air gun, blow all the debris out of there, and uh, we'll get that out. That was not very tight. All right, so you can see there's only a single pickup on this. There is a nice rubber gasket there, but uh, I'm going to put a new hose on, and uh, I don't know. I might keep that check ball pickup. I might not. What the heck is this on here? A blade of grass or something? He's a plastic. That's weird. All right, I'll get this changed out real quick. All right, deciding if I want to keep this check ball pickup or not. Here's a test. That check ball isn't really checking much and certainly not going to hold fuel up to the carb. I think she's a goner. All right, here's how the pickup looks now. Uh, I got a Polaris style, I guess you'd call it, uh, just a screen on there. And, uh, yep, yeah, no check valve. That means I'll be starting it on the squirt bottle for the, you know, cold starts when it's been sitting for days on end. I um, just want to show you, I got these compression bands on here. Uh, Polaris calls them a ring compression. 708-0402 is the Polaris part number. I have no idea where else you'd get those. Uh, they're like a clamp but uh, they don't have any ears on them. I don't know why I didn't just use a clamp. Obviously, the hole's big enough, but maybe it's because that's what I use on pickups all the time. Um, just a little more assurance that this thing won't fall apart. All right, one thing to note here, just the way I had that tube, natural curve of that pickup tube, it went with the outlet fitting right here. Um, this top one, that's the outlet. The bottom one, that's the return line from the carb. So that should put it right back into this corner of the tank, which is the lowest spot of the tank. And uh, everybody should be happy. All right, let me show you how the fuel system came out. So no surprises down there at the tank, just what you'd think. Uh, ran them up under the recoil because that's a lot safer than running them up the clutch side. Big giant Wix 33001 filter, right where I can see it, just in case I'm getting anything. I mean, it's a plastic tank. I shouldn't be seeing any rust. Uh, if you peek in there, you can see where the impulse line got put on. That's that black line. And then run around to the other side quick. And uh, I routed the return line kind of tight up through there, right over the top of the impulse line just to be sure it never gets in the way of the clutch or the belt or anything else. Moving on to some ignition issues. So the first thing I did is check this cap. The cap was, of course, on the end of the spark plug wire here. And what I wanted to check was that it's not a resistor cap, and it's not. It's a straight-through cap. I just grabbed my voltmeter, I ohmed it out, it ohms out at zero ohms, direct connection. So we're good to go with this one. I would not run a resistor cap on this sled for the simple reason that the resistor is one more thing that could fail and kill your spark while you're racing. Here's another JLO thing that stinks. All right, so this bolt, yeah, I can get to it. This one over here, oh, that one sucks. Uh, so thanks, JLO. We can just get to it with the box end from underneath and get that exhaust snugged up and yes i am going with the flexi pipe for the moment 
it'll be fine for a test run, but uh, before I race, I got to change it. Right, the wiring on this motor is pretty simple. All we got coming out of it is a blue and two yellows. Well, these yellows are your lighting coil, and in my case, they'll go to the tack. Eventually, I'll hook it up. Um, I do get a little bit of a mess to clean up here. Look at that. How's that for a great connection? Sooner or later, I'll fix that, but I'll probably just tape it up today. And then this should be the kill switch since it appears to be going back to the same spot. We'll wire it up like it's the kill switch, and we'll find out. All right, we got our ground wire reconnected. I got uh, the tether hooked up. The tether is unplugged, as you can see. There should be no spark. And there is none. Now we're going to plug the tether back in. Should have spark. And we do. No spark. Spark. All right. All right, so I got the ignition system squared away. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to wire in the tack next. It's just those two yellow wires. And then uh, I think we're going to pull the rope pretty quick. The time has come. Let's give her a little squirt out of the squirt bottle, pull the rope, and see what happens. Thought something would happen. I think I might have flooded it. I pulled the plug out to make sure I still had spark. I do, but there was a lot of fuel blowing out that spark plug hole. Uh, at any rate, I got the compression tester here. Let's see what we got. All right, kind of held there. So, I don't know, you probably can't see it. I'll bring it over to you, but it's about 170 PSI. Holy cow. Definitely going to have to run some 91 non-oxy on this thing. All right, hopefully that unflooded it. We'll find out. Oh, yeah! Oh, boy. She's pumping, too. The filter is already full. She needs a little tuning. All right. I got the doors open to try to let the cloud a two-stroke out. It smells pretty good. Um, I've been tuning on the carb a bit and getting things dialed in. And uh, I'll show you where I'm at. That's a pretty big improvement over my first fire, and uh, I think we're about ready to wheel this thing outside and give it a try. I'm going to find the clutch guard now.
I deserve that. It's great to have this project done. It's great to see it's running strong. Now I got a lot more tuning to do. I mean, this is just first throw, a little quick twiddling the needles on the carb, wild guess on the clutching, off we go, right? I'm sure I can get more out of this thing, but uh, for now, I'm happy with it. It's stronger than it was with the old engine, and uh, I don't know, it just seems real good. So, with that said, I want to say a huge thanks to the patrons. Uh, you guys are the best, really appreciate your support of the channel. Everybody else should know that the uh, patrons support the channel a little bit every month, and in return they get all the videos early, and they get their names up on the screen like you see there, and sometimes they get some behind the scenes stuff. Um, let's see, what else? Oh yeah. Check and make sure you're subscribed. YouTube likes to unsubscribe people. We've been hearing about it. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit that notification bell so you know when the new videos are coming out. And uh, I guess we'll see you at the Wild Bill 20. I just got home from work and the first snow is still on the ground. You know what that means.